All right. So I will say officially good morning to everyone. Um, good morning. As always, it's good to see you again. It is. And um, it feels good, as they say, to be seen. It is. <laughs> <With> everything. <laughs> so, but um, I do want to say good morning. Any, I like your frame there. Is that a frame? Is oh, that too. You know, I, uh, the center also offer a Zoom and YouTube class, mm -hmm. and I I love that guy. If I could adopt him, he's really really nice and okay. patient, and he shows us a lot of things with this. So, oh okay, yeah, yeah. looks good. Looks mm -hmm. good. I like that. Yeah, I like that. Kind of look like an old TV. It does. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Very nice. good. So th there's an invite for something else. Um, if you opt to join in. Um, you know, with the program and everything. So at this point, what I want to do is get us started on the wow for the week and, and we'll move forward from there. What? So what? the word that I chose for my wow this week is the word balance, B-A-L-A-N-C-E. -E. That's awesome. a good one. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, I, I thought about that word simply because I recognize how important it is to maintain a balance yes. into everything you're doing that affects the whole of you, my body. Because if you stray too far from one side, it's kind of like an anchor. It pulls you too far away from the center of your body or your universe. Mm -hmm. And you can find yourself being depressed at times. That's not what you're about. So it's truly important to maintain balance. And I love, I went out, of course, to find the description of balance. Mm -hmm. And it says it's an even distribution. That's what so it is. Um, when things are, are you surrounded by things that are negative or, or even positive, sometimes you get yourself so far out even with, I always like to feel there's never too much positive things that you can do, but it depends on the things that you consider positive that may have a negative impact. So mm -hmm. that's the word that I chose for this week. And one of the other um, descriptions that I found that I really like, it says balance in all things brings peace and contentment. Yes, so it does. you have an equal distribution of the things that you are dealing with, it does bring you a level of peace and content. Yes. Any, any questions, comments? You know, that's a wonderful word because, you know, I had to divorce myself from watching the news every day because it was just so overwhelming and everybody lying everybody's stealing, everybody cheating. And once I divorced myself from that, my life also, I, I discovered a balance in my life. So mm -hmm. it's, it's so much better when you can divorce yourself from a lot of the craziness in this world. So the word balance is really excellent for today. All right, really. thank you. Um, and, and sharing a piggyback off with some of the things that you said, Annie, mm -hmm. that's one of the things that I had to do months ago is separate myself from the news all the time. I mean, it was like I turn on the TV, CNN, da 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 the whole thing. Um, while I think I've done an excellent job of doing that, what has happened to me is sometimes my friends mm -hmm. don't allow me to stay in my zone uh, because I hear what they read on Twitter, the this, the that, and whatever, mm -hmm. and Facebook or something. And when I say, no, I didn't hear that, simply because I allow myself at 7 p.m., I watch world news, I watch the, the weather and the local news at 11 for 15 minutes, because after the first 15 minutes, they get into some other things I don't want to hear. Mm -hmm. And that's what I've gotten it down to, to give me balance. Yeah. But controlling relationships sometimes is very difficult because yeah. they are not in your zone. So yeah. I'm still working off of that and trying to be very polite when I say no, I don't I don't do Twitter, I don't do whatever, 
or else I'll get these text messages with all of the TikTok things and whatever. So it is a challenge, so, but I am trying to balance <laughs> these things. Yeah. But yeah. Um, thank you for the input. Anyone else? Yes, that's one of the things I'm dealing with too, trying to get some balance. Because, uh, you know, they say, you know, you say preservation is law of the land. I'm, I'm, I'm steadily doing for others than not doing for myself. And I'm finding myself um, dangling, okay? And, and this is very, and it's, it's important. And we're talking really important. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, balance. I, that's my favorite, one of my favorite words. Well, you know, the thing about it is in order to find um, the solution is like you have to recognize it first. So yes. if you recognize, you know, what what's creating some of your dangling, you yes. need, then you can work on trying to make a change. But you, you have to recognize it. And then you always also have to make a promise that you're going to work on things that will make a difference. So, very, very good. Very good. I like that. Okay. Um, on the announcement mode, and, and I just want to verify everybody does have the latest virtual schedule, class schedule, right? Okay. Well, you gave me. Okay. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have one. I don't have one. Okay, Thelma. All right. Let me make a note. I'll send that out to you. Okay. You. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, sorry about this. All right. On the um, announcement side, the next upcoming event is the Fall Masquerade Festival and Pumpkin Decorating Contest, <laughs> <laughs> which will be held on October 30th. And it's from 10 to 11.30. And of course, you know, people are um, free to decorate. Well, we're inviting people to decorate pumpkins and, and have them ready to enter or talk about in our pumpkin judging contest. And I'm looking forward to that. And I hope that you are also. And um, it's always fun. It really is. And I am still in awe of the things that are being done to try to maintain continuity in our lives, you know. And, and my thing is always, if the people take their time, or the staff take their time to put this work in, the least that we can do is participate and show appreciation. Mm -hmm. uh, last Thursday, I think it was, was when they had the breast cancer recognition. Mm -hmm. And it was my first, that's right, Mary, you were there. And I think I saw Linda as well. But what was um, unique for me is knowing how that event has always happened in the past and we were all in the same space. Mm -hmm. I thought it was an excellent job of making you feel that we were all still in that same room. And it was fun. It really was. I mean, even though the matter was serious, but it was fun with the, the, the games and things that we did. And I had a really great time. So I, I do say hats off to that, to the um, Buffy and the team that put that together. And I'm certain that we're going to have a good time for the pumpkin contest. <laughs> we all good? Yeah. Good. Anybody planning on entering there for showing their pumpkin? <laughs> and you can wear a mask or uh, wear your Halloween outfit or <clears throat> whatever. We, ne we were never allowed to participate in Halloween, and even my children. <laughs> That's something we never participated in and and I think it's fine for the those that you know that does participate in I never say anything negative about it but that's right. something we don't do and well I, I do remember growing up we did do Halloween of course we were limited on our costume <laughs> but you could you couldn't purchase one so whatever you know was made up or something like that I I am somewhat um surprised that my subdivision is H well the HOA they still asking about something to do with Halloween. I personally will not distribute any candy or anything to children 
um, in my, my neighborhood or anywhere else. I'm just not doing that. And like I said, I'm, I am somewhat surprised that some people are planning on doing this, mm -hmm. you know, but it's a personal thing, but uh, that's how I look at it. But like I said, I won't, I won't turn the light on and I certainly will not be doing it. Candy Excuse me. Just for the safety. Mm -hmm. okay? okay. All right. Now, um, I got this message this morning, and it may or may not um, impact you, um, but one of my students sent me this notice. Uh, I know many of you purchased Beat and Button magazine. Are you familiar with that magazine? Okay. Well, what is happening is um, this message says as of October 2020 issue for Beat and Button, the magazine, this will be the last edition a publication of that magazine. Um, Calma decided to end the publication due to declining sales. In addition, their big show out in Milwaukee, the Milwaukee Beat and Button show, that one is closing permanently also. Oh my. Now, for what she's saying is Beadwork Magazine, which is still published by Interweed Press is still being produced. So if you're looking for Beat and Butt Magazine, the October edition will be the final one under that name. And then Beadwork will continue at this particular time. So I, I thank her for sharing that information. Um, I may purchase the Beat and Button October 20 edition just to have the last edition of the magazine. But I thought that was interesting. And uh, of course, I responded and thank her for sharing the information. But this is another example of the mm -hmm. impact of COVID for things that we don't think about. Yeah. I mean, I mean, really, it is. It, I, I told her it was like a, the silent impact of oh. this. I mean, that beating butt show out in Milwaukee has been going on for years. And oh. I mean, it has always been a humongous show. And uh, people traveling in from, I mean, even came, coming in from outside of the country would attend that show. So that is a big hit. And when you think about it, you have to think about Milwaukee. Or this, uh, uh, well, yes, yeah, in Milwaukee, but just thinking about the state, the loss of revenue and other things. So, you know, when we're talking about um, this pandemic and the impact, this is another thing that I'm sure in the mainstream, one never thought about. So just to make you aware of that, the I was hoping to go there one day. <laughs> oh, to that show? Yeah, I really wanted to go because I knew it was, it was a big to-do type thing. Oh, absolutely, so. absolutely. And they brought instructors in from all over the world. They mm -hmm. always did. The mm -hmm. other thing that I found out, for those of you that may have been ordering products from Fusion Beads, Fusion Beads, I guess it's been about two or three months, closed their brick and mortar store. And the announcement was they were essentially like going out of business is what I determined. But then in Friday's class, um, someone made it known that they had received a notice from Fusion Bead saying that they were up and working again. However, they are an online store on Amazon. Oh, okay. So, if, and I always liked Fusion Beads because um, I always felt that they had the best sea beads. Um, and they sold other things, but their sea beads, the quality of them and the price of them, I thought was real competitive. So, if you're a person that's working with beads in those areas, um, I just want to make you aware. Now, I have not had the opportunity to go online and confirm that, but I, I do believe the individual that said, so if you go out Amazon, you might want to check. Just mm -hmm. search on the Fusion Beads. Okay. So does anybody else have any information? Are you not collecting data? Are you not bringing this information to light so that we can all share in this news? These are important things to know. But you know, the only thing that I'm seeing is that uh, I subscribe to, I think it's four different beading companies uh, getting monthly subscriptions. All right. And I do notice a lot of them, they're slow. Some of them they skip a month or you get them all at one time and everybody is really kind of struggling. Now, these are the publications or the products? No, these are the products. Oh, okay. Uh, things okay. like Dollar Bead Box or Bargain Bead Box. Those are subscriptions that I subscribe to. 
Right. And they are slow. They are slow okay. as well. Okay. Okay. So does anybody else have any problems receiving their products? Well, I'm going to tell you like this. <laughs> I, uh, on my, my beads and things, I've been doing pretty good, but everything else has been taking 18, 20, 25, 30 days. Really? Yes. And I complained about it because I was complaining to so one service. I said, uh, I paid for next day service, $35. I got two weeks, but you know, but you're taking prizes, you're taking, you do provide, providing the service, taking the, the monies, but you're not getting your money back. And I don't hear COVID-19 because, you know, I, I, it don't work for my bills. <laughs> Wow! Wow! Yeah, I'm going to pay thirty-five dollars. When they going from they going from one, if it's FedEx going to the post office, that's a big problem. Uh, if it's a shipper shipping to from some company and shipping it to uh, the post office, there's a problem. I got a package right now that should have been here nine thirty. It got it, re it reached Atlanta, haven't made it yet. They I said just the label was created, so there are problems. There are big wow. problems. Wow! Wow! <laughs> That thirty-five dollars shipping was too much for me. Yeah, I couldn't do. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, sometimes you want to get stuff and you want to be able to. Never, not me, not that, not at thirty-five dollars. Well, at the amount of the product that was there, out of thirty-five dollars, uh, was kind of worth it. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. I, because they lost the package, then I, I would have been out of a, a absurd amount of money. Mm -hmm. That was the problem. Well, <laughs> I, I I hear you. Like I said, not thirty-five dollars, <laughs> but no matter. But the thing about it is when you use, and then I'm going forward, things like PayPal or something, you have mm -hmm. guarantees on your money. If they don't deliver or you pay for, you know, express freight, you have an option there. So I always do things like that. Well, I got to do that because one, the one company that I'm talking about, uh, 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 they suggested PayPal when I, when I paid. Oh, yeah. Excuse me. No, I, I always use that. Uh, I, I belong to Amazon Prime and all. And I just I can justify it by the freight cost. Do a lot of ordering. Okay. So if there's nothing else, no comments, we're going into our show and tell. And then I'll get back to talking about um, some of the other things I want to share with you today. So here we are. Um, bum, 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 bum. All right. So what we have, I, I who, who made this? Mary. Mary. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell. You I got a baby bed, huh? baby, used to be a baby bed. What did you say, Nancy? It looked like, you know, the baby beds that you Or the car that she has this on? Uh-huh. This is my, 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 my cart, my, uh, Jewelry cart, you know them little red, orange, and green cart uh, drawers in them. Oh, okay. Oh, oh that you have it, it recess in too. Mm -hmm. mm. I like it though. Mm hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. There's that one bead you talk about up there in that on that that clear one. There's that one bead. <laughs> this one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What, what kind of chain did you use? Now? What kind of chain did you use? I just use a regular chain. I have two chains I use, uh, one gold, one silver. So with making the pendants, I can just swap, 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 swap. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do that as well. I um, Let me see, where's the other one? Hope I'm not doing the same one. This is a different setup. Yeah. But Mary mm -hmm. loves her wire. No if and buts about it. She loves mm. the wire. It, it helps me with stress. It's like a, no, it's okay. <laughs> it's fine. It's pretty. All of them pretty. Very good. My clipboard. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is Nancy um, submitted work when Nancy is in both classes. So I'm going to show you this morning what she submitted. Um, it apply more to the most of the people um, that do a lot of beadwork user in the afternoon or something like that. But then I decided it's a good idea to show them anyway, because yeah. once again, I still have people in even in my beginners class. Some of them are doing like uh, beadwork, working with the needle and beads. So um, this is uh, Nancy's piece. Nancy, you want to talk about? I love it. 
this is nice. this is the peyote bracelet with a brick stitch on the end, the closure. So you know, I ran out of beads, so I had to just fill in what I had. I like that. Mm -hmm. Real pretty. Now, was this the one that was done where they had the brick stitch ends and the pearl, the netting in between? No. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, this is different. Mm -hmm. I do so many patterns, I forget. Because these uh, look like square beads here. Okay. Yeah, they're the cubes. Cube the cubes. I'm sorry. The cube beads. Mm -hmm. So that gives you more of a stacked effect. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Mm -hmm. and, and what is that called again? Um, peyote, peyote cube stitch. Okay. And the cube with the cube beads. Okay. And this is a brick oh. stitch set up here on the end. They all they all cube beads, but the ends, like from right. here to here on both sides, right. it is um, done as using what we call a brick stitch. Mm -hmm. And one thing that's neat about brick stitch, if if you need to learn how to increase and decrease brick stitch is a good one to learn to do that because what happens is if you watch here this started out with her base of six b's but you see as it's going down the next level they dropping in numbers that's mm -hmm. where the decrease is coming in mm -hmm. oftentimes when you see um a beaded piece or a piece that's been woven where we get like a lot of frills and things like that, and you get the twirls in your piece, it comes about when um, we're doing a lot of increasing um, and decreasing. And many times we get it by changing the bead size. So like if you go like a 15, 11, 10 and on down, it changes sort of give you like a wave and things like that. That's how it's done. But that was just to give you um, so that you could see. And I think this was the, OK, you just had it laid out differently. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Gotcha. Gotcha. That's nice. Yeah. Now, Thanks. one of the things um, I, I wanted to show, and this is from um, someone else that's, um, in, that attends most of my Fridays class. But I always loved this. I was going through uh, things, and I found this. But when we talk about stringing, Ooh. this is a classic example of you don't have to know all of these fancy stitches. This mm -hmm. is just stringing. But the thing about it is, it's the beads that mm -hmm. are being used. Mm -hmm. and, and I always try to stress how important it is to really look at your, you know, sometimes you may need to buy a quality piece to add that glam glam to what you're working on. But I love this and it just has a very elegant look and stuff like that, but I wanted you to see um, what happens when sometimes you just invest and I knew she did all of her, selected her bees based upon, because this is a tube right here. Mm -hmm. But what she did do in some places was do like a little knotting in between. I was just wondering that, okay. Now, that's knotting in between her beads. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like Rather that. Rather than adding spaces, she, she did a knot in between. That'll work. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, you know, I particularly want to talk about that because back to this thing about knotting and other things. And, um, I'm not going to do it today, but I'm just prepping you for the fact that I will reach, I will show that video again on the knotting, the square knots, because I want you to be able to see how not, the ability to knot things makes such a big dif difference in what you're working on. Um, what I did do is I pulled some things that I had, like this okay. bracelet here, which is one of one of my braces I wear a lot. This is simply a two bead that has two wood beads on the end, and I did a square knot to finish it off. And it has a, a what we call a slider stop at the end. Mm. And these two ends 
flow through just a wood bead. So I can just slip it on and tighten it up. And um, that's another thing that um, I always felt that made macrame such a unique thing. Because once you learn how to do the square knots, it is just, you can just do so, so much and add another layer to your jewelry making skills. But this is a bracelet I wear a lot. And as I said, this is just a two that slipped onto my, my threads or my ropes, as you call it, to anchor this piece. Um, I found, now these are other things that I have done in the past. But this is a, a step up from macrame per se, because it gets into using like these are done with leather, um, strips of leather. And this is a wrap bracelet that was done. And of course I have loads of them because they're, as a matter of fact, I have this one on today. But it's a great way to use up leftover beads. Mm. Um, and this is beads just anchored to leather cords in this one. And you know, for a while it was the fad. Everybody was wearing the wrap mm -hmm. ring, and mm -hmm. the chin loo or whatever you call it. But it goes back to having that capability of um, working with threads and getting into knotting. Now this particular bracelet, when I made this bracelet, I only did one. <laughs> and the reason I only did one is because I wanted to figure out how to do it. But it is time consuming. And, and, and trust me, I'm the person to always tell everybody, don't talk about time. But I got to the point, it seemed like I was never going to end. Because it's this started out with probably like 72 inches of leather because you, you're wrapping around. And my first layer started with a layer of pearls. And it's, you know, it started here when I created my loop. Mm -hmm. I started here and did the pearls. And then when I got to the end, I went around and attached the next layer to the last row and went around. And, and I'm, so, I'm serious, it, it probably took me about a week to do it. But it was like, it seemed like it never was going to end. But once again, it's one of my favorite bracelets. I know how to do it now. But um, it, was, it wasn't like quick, 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 quick. But that's what crafting is about, or jewelry making. But I love having that sense of, so once you've um, conquered the concept of your macrame technique, it's very easy to build upon doing these wraps and other things. And of course, when you get involved in using leathers and other things, you get involved into different type of closures again, not your basic, because we're not crimping our leather. And um, I think this was, yeah, I did a front view of how the bracelet looks. Oh, that's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. That's how it, when I put it on, that's how I wear it like that. Nice. Beautiful. Yeah. And Is that the this, button that you make that centerpiece for buttoning up? Yes, this one. it's a button. And when I you do a lot of work with leather and some of the other materials, I use a lot of buttons. Even when I do bead work, um, I use more buttons. And the reason I do is because when you use metal to me on pieces that have been woven, it's like sometimes the metal can make the piece look so hard where a button softens it and it blends more with the material and it just gives you a softer, more elegant look. Because sometimes your closures when they're metal on beadwork can take that piece and make it look like it overshadows it. Like you don't really see, particularly, let's just say you had a piece and you had a, a closure on it that was like a real bright, like gold finish or something like that. Mm -hmm. You won't really see the beadwork because the gold finish is popping out at you. 
I love your hand. <laughs> Do you really? Oh, I was about to shake it from my Look, I was about to wave it it's at you. Really but I'm beautiful. Gonna, Put it away. But but that's essentially how that bracelet look when I wear it. Now, and and this is really working well for me because now I'm having an opportunity to really like go back and clean up and look at some of my things, trying to follow through with the things we're doing. But uh, this is a necklace that I found that is one of my favorites. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh uh. And I called <laughs> it, I call this infinity. And the reason I call it infinity is because I haven't finished it yet. <laughs> and what the thing that happened is I had two pieces of this chain and each piece was only about four and a half inches long. So I was trying to figure out what am I going to do with it? So this is a lock, a real lock came off the luggage. <laughs> and I used the lock to connect the two pieces together. All right. And then, oh, oh, I see. Yeah. So then I started putting all these things on it. That's why I call it infinity. I'm not finished yet. But the pieces like this, these pieces are natural brass. Well, you know, brass can be dark or whatever. Mm -hmm. So this is when I came back and I used my patina paints. Mm -hmm. And these pieces that you see, like this piece right here, this is just a washer from a hardware. Same thing over here. Nice. So I use the patina paints and I painted mm -hmm. these things. And on these two pieces, when I got through painting with patina, I had some resin left over and I didn't want it to go to waste. So I covered oh, yeah. it with resin. That's why it has that shiny technique to it. Okay. But I have some other things that I plan to attach to this I just haven't done it yet. But that's the neat thing about it is I can throw a jump ring on and anchor it anytime. Because my concept is when I finish with this, it'll be full of stuff. Oh. <laughs> Pretty loaded. Yes. But you you make sure you, you add your brown and orange in there, didn't you? Oh, I, yes. <laughs> I told you, you know me well. And even with this lock, the lock wasn't the color that I wanted. So I painted that with patina yellow paint, too. It up. So it would be a you know a different contrast against this. So in particular, what I'm trying to share with you is, is that you can, you just have to reach out in your mind and, and plan what, you know, have that vision of what you want to see. And sometimes your vision will stay directly on the path that you want. And sometimes it may not, mm -hmm. but that's, that's what the key is, is looking at it like that so that you can see that. So um, I wanted to give you some examples of other things that you can look at to help you along the way and try not to just stay in that straight path of this is all I'm going to do and that's it. Um, and normally I don't do this because Julia's not here, but I wanted you to see where Julia, who has been in my beginner's class for so long, but working <laughs> and taught herself basically working at a level that's far beyond where she was in class only because she restricted herself. But she sent, I'll show this this afternoon, this afternoon class. Like, okay. But um, I'll just let you see her work. I mean, it's gorgeous. Oh, my. Oh, mm -hmm. That's a netted bracelet. But she she's doing fantastic. Well, she, she was doing fantastic anyway, because she said, she, I can't do it with you. She always had some fantastic. Well, of course. I've always tried to get her to, you know, step outside that box. She just oh, went through but, but COVID made her step outside that box. Yes. And, oh, and I, I am so impressed with what she's doing. So I, I'm just sharing with you is I'm definitely, let me just see if I can get this to work. Going back to um, showing that video next week on the um, macrame again, because then you'll be able to hear it. So I have my board set up, but um, with the video, I'll go back to, sh you know, so you'll be able to hear and see what the square stitch is about, because that's what this is. 
Now, lastly, before we end for the day, I want to show you guys, and this is something I purchased a long time ago. Sometimes if you're if following um, anything to do with macrame and other techniques, you may hear them talking about the naughty board. And it's called the naughty do, do it all. This is what the naughty board looks like. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. And this is one of my favorite tools. I ordered this years ago from what was it, jewelry TV or whatever used to come on. But what's nice about this, when I want to um, do knotting as far as like in like pearls or whatever, macrame or anything that involves like using um, stitches or wraps or whatever. And the reason I love this board, uh, I don't know if they make it anymore because when I purchased this, I paid $100 for it. But wow. to me, it was worth it. I don't know if, they, like I said, they do it anymore. But what happens is when, when you're knotting, see it has these numbers and spaces in it. So mm -hmm. I can set the pegs in the spaces and I know exactly where to pull my knot down. Yeah. It'll evenly space everything for you. And that's the great part about this particular board. But having this board is not a requirement for, um, you know, for getting things right because I'm emphasizing if you have this type clipboard, anchor the threads, it's very, very easy to not use an even your clipboard because you can keep your cords tight and, and we'll go through how to do this. But knotting is something I think is very important for a person that really wants to pursue their jewelry crafting to do because when you get into pearls and some of the other fine gemstones and whether it's pearl or not, you may not have enough beads to do spacing, but you have a cords. And um, most times when we're working with um, cords or, or knotting, we like to use silk thread. And I will show you what the silk thread looks like. But I just wanted to make you aware. So just bear in mind that next week I'll show that video again on doing the square knot. And you'll be able to hear me. Hear me later. <laughs> but, um, nevertheless, that's what I wanted to um, just make you aware of for today. Ooh. So are there any questions or anything before we end today's session? Yes, Mary. Uh, can, you, can you purchase a glass, a pair of glasses with a uh, magnifier on it? You mean like regular glasses? Uh, uh, when you're doing things, you know, I mean, I already wear glasses, but you know, I oh, can't. Oh, you mean to magnify what you're doing? Yeah. Now, I have my art lamp, OTT lamp. It has my, I have an art lamp lamp that's portable because I used to carry it to a lot of the shows when I would take a class but it has this flip down screen glass screen so mm -hmm. when I flip it down and look through it it magnifies okay it magnifies so you know that's one of the ones but they are standalone glass pieces that's on a little stand like a lamp that's a magnifier too. And the best place to do is go back in the area where they have, um, like where they do like a lot of um, embroidery and that type of work is where most time where those lamps are located. I know you, it, that's where they used to be in Michaels. Um, so you can get, look for, and I, I'll do some research and see if I find one, but I know you can get like these little magnifiers that stand, that are on a stand like a lamp that you can, look through it because um when i'm doing um bead work if i have a problem particularly at night i will use that lamp and that's another thing that's great about the lamps it true shows true daylight colors mm -hmm. so sometimes you know you get like you do something and you think you picked up a purple bead and it's oh, blue. Yeah. <laughs> And that's, that's not good when you're doing bead work because it's not like you want to go back and remove all of that stuff. But anyway, but that, that may help you. And I'll look to see if I can find something on a standalone um, uh, magnifier for you, Mary. There is a pair that's it's just like a pair of glasses. But I, I remember ordering them years ago, but it's a headache. Um, 
but it is something out there and you probably find it in your research. I can't remember mm -hmm. what it what's the name of it. Were those but... like ocular type glasses? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. The bad part about them, if you a person that don't really have a bad problem with your eyesight, they mm -hmm. work well. But if you're a person that needs to wear glasses or something, mm -hmm. that's a problem. Yeah, yeah they bothered uh, me. They really bothered me. So mm -hmm. I had to yeah, see that that's the downside of something like that. And a lot of things that I do, although it's getting worse, work for me because I had LASIK done years ago and it's still kind of working, you know, for me. But you know, if you just on your own with glasses by themselves, that's a problem. Mm -hmm. So but I know the, the glasses you're referring to. Mm -hmm. But Mary, I'll see if I can find something. And I'm sure doing the searching of our other classmates here they might find something but we'll see we'll go on a merry hunt <laughs> merry i mean okay. I'm trying to all right miss pat how are you i'm doing well um i was just you know excited about learning this macrame <laughs> all right well honestly i'm gonna get you straight do you have a clipboard or anything i that don't I was looking i thought i had one but i guess in you know, get rid of things in past months. I'm, I've not found her. So okay. I'm purchase one. All right. Well, don't worry. Next week we'll use our time on the macrame and the board. Now that <laughs> and, um, I found out how to share the sound and everything. So we'll, we'll a certain, certain cord I need to get. Um, um, I'm going to say don't worry about it yet until we go through that and I'll tell you about the cords and everything. But to answer your question, it's not necessarily, it just depends on how you want your weave to look. Yeah. Really. I mean, other than the fact that you're going to use some cord that has some, te some thickness to it, you're not going to use um, like threads or anything like that. You definitely want some cord that's thick. So when I buy cords, I'm always back in the drapery department or something like that. You know how they use that thicker cord or twine or whatever. That's what I, I always look for. So that's not such a big deal. And you know my rule, if you get a big spool like I had that's all white, no problem. I take that cord and get my real thick, juicy um, Sharpies, the thick ones, and I will go down and color my cord. <laughs> so I believe in having quality at the best price. <laughs> so, so that's it. So are there any parting words before we end for today? I appreciate y'all. Uh, we appreciate you as well. So on that note, I'm going to remind everybody that balance is key. And in the event that I see any of you this afternoon, I will be happy to see you again. If by chance I don't, I'm still wishing you, um, I don't want to say tidings and cheer at this point, but I'm just wishing you a week a remaining time of being balanced, okay? Yeah. And I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Right. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.